Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, They Don't Want Anything Bad to Happen to Their Abusers. They don't want anything bad to happen to their abusers. I know for some of you all, that sounds so strange. You mean to tell me that a controlling, manipulative, crazy-making, liar, cheat, thief, that there are some people who don't want anything bad to happen to someone who deserves to be punished? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Well, then these people must be out of their minds. They are. Victims in their conversation, in the way their body language is when talking about abusers they still care about, whether it's a spouse, a family member, friend, co-worker, boss, somebody who they have received some benefit from. Their mindset doesn't want anything to happen to the abuser out of fear, worry, or they might cut me off. Okay? Let's look at some examples. Fictional examples based on some some true situations, but we can't get into too much detail because we don't want to embarrass some people. But we have these individuals who reason that nothing bad should happen to the abuser because, well, you know, karma and excuse me, <laughs> karma is coming back around. If that's what some folks believe in, karma is coming back around to those individuals who have put evil out into this world. So why do you want to stand in the way of justice being served? See, that's justice. When someone has done so much negativity to another human being, whether overtly, covertly, systematically, or I was just in a rage and I just went off and did something bad, then justice should be served. Bad is going to come back around if I'm out there doing things that God himself has even warned the abuser, don't do this again. Don't sin again. And yet he or she will go and do it over and over again. And the victim gives the abuser the pass every time. We're almost there. Come on, some of you counselors, teachers, educators, leaders, psychologists, what have you. We're almost there. The abuser is going to serve time and then, no, I don't think so. I can speak about this because the church wanted to deal with a situation some years back. But no, I don't think so. Okay. The police wanted me to go ahead and get certain things done. And I was like, mm, no, I don't think so. You do know that God's justice is happening. It's occurring. You see, some people don't look at things that way. All they look at is how is this going to impact me in a way where I might end up losing something. Well, if you stick around with an abuser, you're going to lose something, all right? You're going to lose your life. Sooner or later, it may not be for some people, them being in their graves. But you may lose all that happiness that you could have attained had you not been with that person. Great opportunities to raise your children in healthy, functional atmospheres. But no, no, I'm going to stick it out with the abuser. A future of love with someone who appreciates you, loves you, respects you. But no, justice shows up. Justice shows up to take a man's wife or a wife's husband away from her or him. Justice shows up and takes that abuser's house, car, 
money's in the bank. Justice shows up and beats a, an abuser down, whether it's the brother, the cousins, the father, the uncles. But no, no, says the victim. No, don't hit him. Don't do any. No, he got what's coming to him. Boom, and knocks him out. Oh, no, you're going to go to jail. Oh, no, I'm not. It just so happens that he's connected. <laughs> you see, justice. And I keep telling some victims to move out the way and they think I'm just, oh, she's just talking. No, I'm saying you better move out the way because God's coming in. You had us pray. You prayed. You got other people around you to pray. And some folks who don't even believe in God, but believers, they see what's going on. Those prayer warriors pray for those victims. And justice is going to be served. I don't understand at times all of what is going on in the mind of a person who doesn't want justice to be served concerning their abusive father their angry husband, their messed up wife. I remember there was a guy who was engaged to this woman who was disturbed. I mean, she'd had some things going on with her and he made excuse after excuse after excuse for that woman. But he chose, he chose to remain in that situation. And there comes a point where People aren't going to keep running to the aid of the victim. They're just not going to do it. The victim ends up going through his or her share of issues. And sometimes those issues rob them of that one opportunity that they could have been able to finally get the peace of mind that they wanted. Because simply put, they didn't want to walk away. They didn't want to make the phone call. They didn't want to show up at the meeting. They didn't want to process paperwork. They didn't want to tell the truth. They'd rather tell the lie. They'd rather say that what we saw as witnesses wasn't really what we saw and what we heard. No, that's not what you heard. I remember years ago, I overheard a conversation of a particular relative who is involved with this person now. And I recall when the relative said, why did you hit me? Excuse me? Wait a minute, hold up. And I had an anger that was boiling inside of me. And when I spoke to the person about what I overheard, they claimed, oh, no, no, that's not what I said. Excuse me? So we got those individuals that they're going to stay right where they are. They're going to stay because they're insistent on being in the way while God is trying to get at that person, that abuser. So you want to keep standing in the way of this person who deserves to go to jail be six feet in the grave, or wherever else, the victim, I want to be there. Okay, you want to be there. Mm -hmm. You rather go to your grave. You rather go to the jail. You rather affect your children's lives in a negative way where they could possibly turn out to be abusers or abused later in life, making the same mistakes that you made. You rather do all that. That man or that woman is solid gold, right? The sun rises and sets on that person in your life. Oh, okay. So we back off. As believers, we back off. As teachers, educators, leaders, preachers, doctors, they got to sign a form, but they don't want to. They got to show up, but they don't want to. Somebody could be prosecuted, but no, I'm not pressing charges. Okay. This is why, the truth be told, some individuals are in their graves today. 
all the stress, all the upset, all of the things they could have done to remedy the situation simply by not being there. (laughs) Nope. And so they ended up in a grave a lot faster. There's a lot of abusers walking this earth. And justice isn't coming to them, but it's coming to the children. I know, interesting, right? The sins of the father. But I wasn't a part of that. But sometimes, in order to get someone to see the light of their evil ways, Sometimes someone who they love so much, who they esteem so much, that abuser, he esteems his daughter. He loves his daughter. And then that daughter is hurt. And when he looks at what's taking place, he sees himself. That's justice. Victim may have decided to leave. Some of you all, you left. And then you look back and you see, oh no, the son, the son is going through many trials and that father has to watch his son go through a lot of what he went through. Sometimes those things are so more, they're more, I should say, (laughs) They're more disturbing than the abuser actually going through the butt whipping that he deserves or she deserves. Just imagine watching your offspring be abused, be broken, be in a difficult or controlling relationship. The abuser couldn't see his or her ways in the relationship. They chose maybe not even to see the controlling, manipulative types of things they were doing. But they can see it though when their children go through it. Some people, they wish curses and they wish evil while they remain in these toxic relationships. That's not the way to go either. That victim who's saying, oh, I'm going to get with the witch and the warlock and brew up some mess. It's only a boomerang effect, especially if that abuser, believe it or not, has some prayer warriors around him or her. My child is under some kind of curse. Uh Uh-uh, oh no, but your child did a lot of dirt, did a lot of evil. Yeah, but that messy wife or husband is sitting up there throwing out some witchcraft. Mm. Now there's the evil that's fallen on that victim in great proportions. Well, I just want to... I just wanted him to pet be be paid back for all of what he put me through. Yeah, but you don't go that way. And we got some people who they look all sweet, nice, and innocent. We know they've gone through their share of issues and continue to do so with these people that they remain with. Like I said, it could be the spouse, the family member, the friend, what have you. That's stirring up the abuse. And so their idea is to pay that person back through various ways of uh, darkness and evil and witchcraft and whatever else. And the boomerang effect shows up sooner or later. Basically, it all comes back on them, you see. So when God is moving on somebody, to disconnect from an individual who is controlling, abusive, manipulative, what have you. And they choose not to. And we pray and then God himself moves on us to pray for other people and leave that case alone. To disconnect the connection, 
that once was through the counseling or what have you, that person is left to fending pretty much for themselves because they don't want to move out the way, you see. They don't want to get the necessary counseling or stay in the counseling. They don't want to help with the exit plan. They're being uncooperative in an investigation. I mean, so we can't do but so much. The abuser deserves to be taken through the judicial system. God, when we are doing things that we're not supposed to be doing, there's consequences to the sin, right? God's mercy shows up for a time and then eventually his mercy is not there. And he says, we got to do some time for some things that we said or that we did. Okay. Whether it's time behind bars or time staying in a relationship that we want so desperately to get out of, or it's time at a workplace and uh, there's no new job in sight or time to deal with whatever you're dealing with until God releases you, you see. Now, if we got to go through that, <laughs> then you know that it's only fair and right that folks who are doing all sorts of things go through their share as well. Mind you, negative things, disturbing things. So for those of you all who are sitting back and you're watching this movie unfold with some people, or you may be in this abusive movie, I'm telling you right now that the command is to move to separate, to divorce. The command is to seek some help, especially if you're a minor listening to this. Because either way, you look at it, not saying anything, not wanting somebody to get in trouble, those sorts of things all they do is make matters worse because nine times out of 10, if they're abusing you, there's probably somebody else in the circle that they're being emotionally and or physically abusive to, whether covertly or overtly. And that person needs to be brought to justice. That person most likely has gotten away with the abuse for a long time. The first wife didn't press charges. The second wife didn't press charges. The third wife, the fourth wife, somebody better press some charges and get that man off the street. The woman, she's been lying, she's been stealing, she's been abusing. The seniors in her family smacking them, hitting them, what have you. People know about this sort of thing. Well, she went through a lot with her mother or her father, but that doesn't excuse elder abuse. Somebody needs to be reported. You see? For years, somebody has been doing some things that are suspect concerning a child. It might make a bit of sense, right? To set up some cameras. To make sure that eyewitnesses' stories are straight. Talk with this one. If that story sounds similar to this story over here, somebody has a pattern of some abuse. And they need to be brought to justice. So you see how this works? But like I said, we got the victims who... Or those that are aiding the abuse in some kind of way, they don't want to get somebody in trouble. But I'm telling you, as sure as I'm standing here recording this message, that somebody who is being abusive, who is being controlling, who is doing some dark and ugly things, justice is showing up and showing out. So may we just continue to seek the Lord on what all we need to do 
to keep some folks encouraged to do the right thing rather than fall prey to once again the abuser's charming ways to get them to not talk, to get them to not leave, to get them to do whatever. We're just praying in Jesus' name that they will not fall for any of that and that they will finally get strong in Christ and do what needs to be done. That they will no longer make up excuses, lies, cover-ups, or secrets concerning those who are being abused. I pray in Jesus' name that your angels of protection will be around them and that they will stay above ground rather than below. I pray in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, for these things to be made manifested in their life. Freedom, peace, love, and security, as well as safety in Jesus' name. Be free. Thank you, as always, for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. Be that counselor that is taking people out of captivity, not encouraging them to stay. Check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. May God bless you as well as those that you love.